three, global international organizations, two, the United Nations Organization, UN. Introduction. This study session, which discusses the United Nations Organization, is to enable you grasp the essence, composition, organization, workings, problems, and prospects of the United Nations. Particularly, you are expected to know the relation between the United Nations and Africa. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this session, you should be able to understand why the United Nations was formed, explain the aims of the United Nations, identify the achievements of the United Nations, and discuss the relevance of the United Nations to the African states. Background and formation of the United Nations. The United Nations organization rose from the ashes of the Second World War. Thus, a common and unique thing with it and the League of Nations was that they are both products of world wars. This is apart from their similarity in aims, which is elimination of the scourge of war. The origin of the United Nations, which has its headquarters in New York in the United States of America, arose from the need for a new and stronger international organization at the close of the war by Allied powers, especially Britain and the United States of America. Some declarations which recognized the need for an alternative to the League of Nations were 1. The Inter-Allied Declaration of 1941, signed in London by representatives of 14 nations, recognized the need to work together in war or peace and with other free people to ensure enduring peace. And 2. The Atlantic Charter of 14th of August 1941, in which the United States and United Kingdom recognized the need for some form of international organization by providing in the Charter for disarming of aggressive nations pending the establishment of a wider and permanent system of international security. Others were the United Nations Declaration, which was signed by 26 states on the 1st of January 1942 in Washington, D.C., at which the term United Nations, suggested by President Roosevelt, was first formally used. The Moscow Declaration of the 30th of October 1943, which brought China and USSR into the movement, and the Tehran Declaration on the 1st of December 1943. All these conferences were instrumental to the establishment of the United Nations. These were 1. The Dumbarton Oaks Conference, held between the 21st of August and the 7th of October 1944 in Washington, D.C., by representatives of the U.S., the U.K., the Soviet Union, and China, which considered a set of proposals drawn up by the United States. It was here that the first formula for the Charter of the United Nations Organization was worked out by diplomatic experts. 2. The Yalta Conference held in February 1945 between President Roosevelt, Prime Minister Churchill, and Premier Stalin culminated in the declaration on the 11th of February 1945 that a conference be called to meet in San Francisco on the 25th of April 1945 to prepare the Charter of the United Nations along the lines proposed by the Dumbarton Oaks Conference. On the 25th of April 1945 in San Francisco, 51 nations attended the United Nations Conference. This formally laid the foundation 
for the birth of the United Nations as the 111th article of the United Nations Charter was drawn up at the conference. The charter was signed on the 26th of June 1945 by the 51 nations including the United States of America at the conference and came into force on the 24th of October 1945 when China, France, the USSR, the United Kingdom and the United States of America and a majority had ratified the instrument. It is normally held that the United Nations was formed the date the charter was signed. This date is referred to as the United Nations Day. Purposes and Principles of the United Nations The purposes and principles of the United Nations are contained in Chapter 1, Articles 1 and 2 of its Charter. Article 1 contains the purposes of the United Nations Charter. The purposes are 1. To maintain international peace and security. 2. To develop friendly relations among states. 3. To achieve international cooperation in solving economic, social, cultural and humanitarian problems and in promoting and encouraging respect for human rights and for fundamental freedoms for all without distinction to race, sex, language or religion and four, to be a center for harmonizing the actions of nations in the attainment of these common ends. To achieve the stated aims, Article 2 of the Charter set forth some principles. These are 1. The principle of the sovereign equality of all its members. 2. Settlement of international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered. And 3. Members shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state or in any other manner inconsistent with the purposes of the United Nations. In text questions. 1. What inspired the establishment of the United Nations? A. The American principle of democracy. B. The European treaty of equality of states. C. The quest of international political stability. D the devastating outcome of the Second World War. 2. How successful has the United Nations been so far in preventing wars? A. Very successful. B. Successful. C. Partially successful. D. Unsuccessful. Feedbacks on the in-text questions. 1. The correct answer is D. If you chose option A, B, or C, then you are incorrect because the Second World War was so destructive that people all over the world sought ways to prevent the outbreak of another world war and the maintenance of peace globally. 2. The correct answer is C. If you chose option A, B or D, then you are incorrect because the United Nations have so far been able to prevent the outbreak of another world war or third world war. However, the United Nations have not been able to prevent the outburst of local wars. Membership. As we have said above, there are 51 founding members of the United Nations. However, the membership is not restricted to only these. Article 4 of the United Nations Charter opens its membership to states which are A. 
peace loving and b accept the obligations contained in the charter and are in the judgment of the organization able and willing to carry out these obligations the admission of any such state will be effected by a decision of the general assembly on recommendation of the security council on angola's independence in 1975 its application for membership was vetoed by the united states in the security council on grounds that Cuban troops were in Angola. The United States had earlier blocked the admission of mainland China for some time. Thus, political and ideological sentiment can come into the determination of membership. Given its provision for membership, the United Nations, which started with 51 members, has about 193 members as a date. This is because most countries that were then dependent or colonies had on gaining independence joined the organization. These countries are mostly in Africa, Asia and Latin America, organs of the United Nations. The United Nations in its Article 7 sets up six principal organs and at least 15 specialized agencies. The principal organs are a General Assembly, Security Council, Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, Trusteeship Council, International Court of Justice, ICJ, and a Secretariat. The General Assembly. It is composed of all members of the United Nations with each member state having five representatives. The assembly has been called the Permanent of Nations. The General Assembly has these powers and functions. 1. The General Assembly discusses questions on matters within the scope of the Charter and make recommendations to the Security Council. Two. It considers matters concerning the maintenance of international peace and security. 3. It initiates studies and makes recommendations for the purposes of promoting international cooperation. 4. It receives and considers annual reports from the Secretary General and other organs of the United Nations. Five. It considers and approves the United Nations budget. Six, it appoints the Secretary General of the United Nations. Seven, it elects the members of ECOSOC and the non-permanent members of the Security Council. Eight, it considers any financial and budgetary arrangements with specialized agencies and Nine, it has power to suspend or expel a member on recommendations of the Security Council. Each member state has one vote. A two-third majority is required for questions relating to peace and security, the admission, suspension or expulsion of members, adoption of the budget, the question of trusteeship system and to any proposal for amending the constitution. A simple majority is sufficient for decisions on other matters. The General Assembly lacks the full powers of a legislature. Rather, it is to be regarded as an international forum to discuss, investigate and recommend policies for the consideration of the states and the people of the world. The Security Council. The Security Council consists of 15 members, formerly 11, five permanent members, China, France, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America, and 10, formerly six, non-permanent 
members elected by the General Assembly for two-year term. Each member state has one representative. The Security Council is the real controlling body of the United Nations. The United Nations expressly confers the Security Council the following powers and functions. 1. It has primary responsibility or maintenance of international peace security on behalf of the United Nations. Although members agreed to submit disputes for mediation, arbitration or judicial decision, the Security Council may intervene at any stage by recommending procedures or terms of settling disputes. 2. The Security Council may determine that sanction of any economic or military nature is necessary to enforce its decisions. Although it has no international force at its disposal, it may call upon member states to supply contingents. 3. It has a military staff committee to give advice and make plans for forcible action. It also has a disarmament commission designed for the purpose of regulating and reducing armaments of various states. 4. It submits annual and special reports to the General Assembly. Each member of the Security Council has one vote, but added weight that is vetoed is given to the permanent members. Decision on procedural matters need an affirmative vote of nine members, while in the case of decisions on a question concerning the peaceful settlement of disputes or a question of sanction, either economy or military, the majority must include the votes of five permanent members, that is, the concurring votes of permanent members. If one of the powers is a party to the dispute, it must abstain from voting. From our discussion here, it can be deduced that the permanent members have veto power, which means that sanctions cannot be applied against a great power. The Economic and Social Council the Economic and Social Council has 54 members elected by the General Assembly for three-year term, with 18 members being elected each year. It has regional commissions in Europe, Asia, and the Pacific, Latin America, and Western Asia. It is the agency which is charged with or engaged in positive action for the improvement of conditions throughout the world. Its functions and powers are 1. The coordination of the economic and social work of the United Nations. 2. It investigates, recommends and promotes voluntary cooperation among member states in such matters as improvements in living standards, health, education and individual freedom. 3. It may call international conferences on matters within its competence. 4. It coordinates the activities of specialized agencies. And 5. It provides needed information to the Security Council. The Trusteeship Council. It is made up of members administering trust territories and many other elected members, with each member being represented by one person. It is responsible for one remaining trust territory, Micropersia. The Council has largely fulfilled its original task of supervising the achievements of former League mandates and colonies assigned to it. With the guardians of the Council, whose membership was balanced between nations administering trust territories and nations without trust territories, a substantial number of countries 
primarily Asian and African, have achieved self-government and independence. Its powers and functions include 1. Consideration of reports by the administering authority on trust territories. 2. Acceptance and consideration of petition from trust territories. 3. Organization of periodic visits to trust territories. And 4. Seize to the political, economic, social, and educational advancement of such territories. Each member has one vote and decisions are based on majority will. The International Court of Justice, ICJ. This is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. It consists of 15 judges elected for nine-year term by the General Assembly and the Security Council. It is the successor of the Permanent Court of Justice which was an organ of the League of Nations. Like the League, it sits at The Hague in the Netherlands. The ICJ has the following powers and functions. 1. It gives advisory opinion on any legal question on request from the General Assembly or the Security Council. And 2. It has jurisdiction over cases involving the interpretation of treaties, breaches of international obligations, reparations for wrongs suffered by a state, and questions of international law. But this can only be done if the parties to the dispute voluntarily submit a case to it. Many nations have signed the so-called optional clause, which means that they have agreed that the court may try all cases or cases relating to specified subjects involving them and other states. The court's decisions in respect of cases brought before it is binding. The Secretariat. This is the permanent civil service of the United Nations. Their staffs are recruited from nationals of every state. It is headed by a Secretary General who is the Chief Administrative Officer. The Secretary General performs these functions, namely 1. He presents an annual report to the General Assembly on the work of the United Nations. 2. He brings the attention of the Security Council to any matter he thinks threatens or endangers world peace. Apart from the above organs, there are specialized agencies or bodies which together with the United Nations constitute the United Nations system. Specialized agencies. There are about 15 intergovernmental organizations or bodies called specialized agencies, a term used in the United Nations Charter. Some of these bodies are the International Monetary Fund, IMF, which exists for the purposes of stabilizing currencies and stimulating world trade. The Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, is devoted to raising standards of nutrition and living, promoting more efficient farming methods, developing fisheries, and providing improved marketing conditions. The World Health Organization, WHO, which provides technical assistance to governments and promotes research, prevents epidemics, improves sanitation, etc. Others are the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, which seeks to promote international understanding in areas of education, scientific development, and sociocultural cooperation. The International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, World Bank, provides capital to restore devastated areas and develop resources. And lastly, among others, the International Labour Organization, ILO, 
which attempts to improve the conditions of the working people of the world. Problems of the United Nations. Some of these are, one, excessive use of veto. The veto power creates obstacles in the progressive will of the United Nations. It also makes some nations more equal than others. And many nations have rightly observed that veto power be thrown overboard. Two, the continuous use of power politics as evident by an armament race and by military and economic interference in Asia, Latin America, and Africa by the big powers, especially the United States of America and the USSR. Three, the two above have negatively affected the admission of members into the organization, as at times discrimination comes in while the charter says all peace-loving nations can be members. United States, because of power politics, has used veto power to block the admission of Angola in 1976 and that of mainland China until 1971 on ideological grounds. 4. Lack of a standing army to enforce decisions. For example, many United Nations resolutions have been ignored by South Africa. 5. Ideological conflicts, which make it difficult for members to work fully together in confidence. 6. The principle of sovereign equality of states makes it difficult for the United Nations to enforce decisions. 7. Inadequate funds and personnel. 8. Members, especially the superpowers, do not use its procedures to carry out its decisions or observe the principles of the Charter. Solutions Some solutions to the above include 1. Revision of the United Nations Charter, at least to remove or extend the veto power. 2. The United Nations needs a standing army. And 3. Realigning the power relationship of the members. Achievements of the United Nations Apart from its many problems, the United Nations has substantial accomplishments to its credit. 1. In terms of maintenance of international peace and security, the United Nations has contributed to over four decades of freedom from the source of world war. For example, it has intervened in Korea in 1950, Congo, now Zaire crisis between 1960 and 1964, etc. 2. It has entered into a hundred peacekeeping and police operations in order to resolve and restrain the spread of local conflicts. These peacekeeping operations have succeeded in preventing the renewal of hostilities and in containing conflict situations in a number of sensitive areas in the world. 3. In terms of settling international disputes, the United Nations contributed greatly in settling the Cuba crisis of 1962, which was a potential source of Third World War, a thermonuclear war for that matter. 4. It has encouraged continued dialogue among nations. 5. The United Nations has achieved a lot in standard setting in the human rights. It evolved the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 the Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, and the Covenant of Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. The last two were signed and came into force in 1966 and 1976, respectively. Six, it has produced international agreements in areas such as ocean resources and nuclear weapons limitations. 
seven, many other international conventions by which nations commit themselves to ensure particular rights have been concluded under the auspices of the United Nations and related agencies, conventions on genocide, slavery, and forced labor, refugees, elimination of racial discrimination, etc. Eight, in the economic, social, and humanitarian field, the specialized agencies have achieved a lot. Example, wiping out of smallpox under a campaign coordinated by the WHO. More than 5,000 projects in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Europe area aided through the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, etc. Failure of the United Nations. One, it failed to see the total independence of some colonized areas of the world. Example, South Africa. Particularly, it has failed to impose necessary sanctions. For example, in March 1988, a resolution calling for selective mandatory sanctions against South Africa for an initial period of 12 months, sequel to Pretoria's crackdown on anti-apartheid organizations, was vetoed by the United States and Britain in the Security Council. Two, it has not totally succeeded in stopping wars. Example, Britain and Argentina in 1983 over Falkland Islands. Three, there has not been worthwhile solutions to the problems of poverty and underdevelopment. The United Nations Financial and Economic Institutions, IBDR and IMF, are geared towards the protection of Western economic interests. Four, there has not been any solution to the problem of nuclear proliferation within the United Nations. Five, the United Nations has not succeeded in making the superpowers, especially the US and USSR, discuss issues relating to world peace. For example, nuclear proliferation and disarmament within the United Nations. The United Nations and Africa. When the United Nations was established in 1945, only three African states, namely Egypt, Liberia, and Ethiopia, that were then independent were members. Although South Africa was equally independent and a member as well, its apartheid policy will not allow us to classify it with the others. As a result of mass liquidation of empires, especially since the end of the Second World War, many African states were then dependent territories or colonies had joined the United Nations on securing their independence. As of now, African members in the United Nations are about 54. African states have benefited from their membership of the United Nations and have through their membership influenced the development of the world, especially in areas of unjust and unequal international system. African states, along with other third world countries, with the support of the Soviet Union, pressurized through the United Nations for a new international order in economic, legal, and information spheres. One, being able to secure their independence, the United Nations commitment to the principle of self-determination assisted in the area of decolonization. Two, being able to establish their identities and recognition through their membership of the United Nations, which denotes their acceptance in international community. Three, being able to get the international community to condemn apartheid policy and since 1964 
the apartheid policy of the Pretoria regime has consistently come up as an African complaint in the United Nations. Four, being able to revolve a regional human rights instrument which sets standards on the subject of Africa, the Banjul Charter of Human Rights and People's Rights of 1981. Five, benefited from the various economic, social, and humanitarian assistance and activities of the United Nations. Six, along with other third world countries, challenged some of the unjust aspects in international setting. So the United Nations system has now come to accept the desirability of a new international economic information and legal order and has made some attempts at making some changes. And seven, being able to protect their sovereignty and international integrity and solve some of the continent's problems. For example, the Morocco in 1956, Tunisia 1952, Sudan, Egyptian 1958, Congo 1960, Guinea 1970, questions among others were brought before the Security Council which intervened. Only few of these cases would have been within the military capability of the African countries in question to handle. Colonies. This refers to colonies that are under the political control of another state. This refers to territories that are under the political control of another state. Power politics is a form of international relations in which sovereign entities protect their own interests by threatening one another with military, economic, or political aggression. Study Session Summary In this study session, you have learnt that the United Nations was formed after the Second World War on the 24th of October 1945 by 51 states. Its formation was preceded by a series of international conferences which started since 1941. At the time of its formation, most third world countries, that is Asia, Africa and Latin America, were yet to be independent. In fact, only three African states were founding members. We also learnt that the United Nations was formed purposely to maintain international peace and security and to prevent any outbreak of another world war. The United Nations has six principal organs and at least 15 specialized agencies. The United Nations has a lot of problems ranging from excessive use of veto power, ideological conflicts, to lack of mechanisms for enforcing its decisions. It has however recorded many achievements particularly in promoting human rights, decolonization, crisis resolution, social and economic assistance to members, and prevention of another world war. Although most African states were colonies when it was formed, they had joined at independence. These states have been able to, through the cooperation of other third world countries, influence and benefited from the United Nations. End of study session three. Thanks for listening.